The next thing we're going to look at is the Dynacord amplifiers. These are the new Dynacord, in this case C series amplifiers. Dynacord is now the worldwide brand for Bosch for professional electronics amplifiers for professional systems. I'm using the Bosch Plena Matrix to send a signal down to the amplifiers, but I have the included EQ, DSP, crossovers, limiters. I have those all turned off right now in the amplifier. They are included in the amplifier, but I'm just using the published high pass filters. In this case, we're looking at the C2800. So that's two channels at four ohms each at 1400 watts per channel, 1414, 2800. So our model numbers actually make sense. So the C version is the contractor that has Phoenix inputs and 10 gauge Phoenix outputs. So you can actually get real cable into the back of these for longer home runs for distant areas in 70 volt. The other thing it has is a front panel that you can dim out. It has a 16 position power delay. So you can have your own sequencer built in and you can have it power delay off of the power switch itself or in rush power or you can use a dry contact closure that's used on the back and power up to 16 of them in a shot. There's also simple GPIO, this would be mutes and preset recalls on the back. So now with all of that taken care of, we've got the live versions over here, which has a front panel power switch on it versus the, the uh, contractor version, which does not. It also has all the DSP built in, but it's XLR inputs for the bands and for uh, uh, places like churches, theaters that might have some things going in and out instead of permanently installed. And uh, it also has the DSP built in and Neutrik NL4 outs. So that's what's going to be powering the EVC rack. Once I move over to the EVC rack in just a minute, we're going to be dealing with the L series amplifiers. And I do have the speaker tunings that are downloadable uh, inside those amplifiers. So that's what's taking care of the sound processing for those. And for the most part, that's just published uh, high pass and low pass filters. EVC, this is a brand new family to the EV Innovation family. EV Innovation consists of EVF, front loaded, EVH, horn loaded, EVA, array, EVU, under balcony, and this is EVC, compact. So we have and a 200 watt 8, a 300 watt 12, a 350 watt 15, and then we have a 400 watt 18. These also have rotatable waveguides as the rest of the EV Innovation family does. So there are two options per waveguide uh, option on this. They are rotatable. They have M10 fly points, so you can fly it or you can get the optional U bracket. They come in black or white. They do have 70 volt versions available and they are in field convertible to 70 volts. Uh, they come in a standard EV coat or a PI version which makes them weather resistant. So I think that's about it. Uh, made for churches, uh, gymnasiums, it's your single point source box. It's not a clusterable array. That's where you move back up to EVF uh, or EVH. Uh, this would be uh, foreground level in background music areas, so your delay fills at a nightclub or your primary system at a high school, a high school gym, a cafetorium, or the gymnasiums where you have four across hanging from the ceiling to go down to the bleachers and then four on the other side for the other bleachers. This is perfect for that type of thing. It will take a baseball straight to the uh, grill, so when you have the kids in the school that throw things, it'll take it. So I should also mention that the 12 inch and the 18 inch sub are currently in their 70 volt version. So we have transformers on that. This myth about you can't have low frequency when you're using transformers on a 70 volt system is truly that, it's a myth. We are clearly doing it here. That's an 18 inch subwoofer that we can run to high level at a distance at 70 volt. The reason we can do this is because of EV's automatic saturation compensation. What this does is it imposes a high pass filter onto the system internally when you approach saturation. So when you start to get to the point where you're going to saturate the transformer, and when you do tr saturate a transformer in a 70 volt system, the ohms load very quickly drops down to the point where it may even look like a dead short on the amplifier. So what we're doing is imposing a high pass filter to lower or reduce, or in, some, in most cases, eliminate that saturation that's happening there thus keeping the integrity of the sound, the clarity of the sound, the speech intelligibility at higher levels, 
and also protecting the amplifier, which is sometimes overlooked. So you can get real bass extension, real sound quality, high fidelity out of a 70 volt system if it's done right. And now we're going to take a look at the X1 line array. The X1 line array has a few patents in it, so first of which we have our circular hydra. The X1 is uh, part of the X-Line Advance family, and there's the 12-inch with the double 2-inch compression driver on its circular hydras. Then we have the X2, which is a more powerful 12-inch, and two 3-inch drivers on pin diffraction hydras. So I'm going to now move on to the Evolve 50. Now, this is currently my favorite product we make, so much so that uh, it's the only gear that I've bought for myself in about 10 years. So I'm going to take it apart now and just show you the full disassembly. Okay, we're done. It's fully disassembled. It's ready to leave. Okay, it's back up. It's running. It's very tip resistant, so we can get way over on it before it wants to uh, go over. It, of course, weighs a million pounds. It has two mic line switchable inputs on combi jacks, so quarter inch or XLR. They have phantom power per. And uh, there's a volume knob on the back. There's a volume knob on the back for each one of these, as well as full DSP. There's a high, mid sweepable, and low built in. I have never used any of them. I'm using it currently in music mode. And this is its default setting. So let me just double check and make sure I haven't, yep, it is currently in its music mode. And I'm going to be running Bluetooth to it because this has stereo Bluetooth. I've told the system to, ret to retain the left over here and via one mic cable, I'm sending the right over to the right hand side. And that's all that I'm doing. Other than that, this is strictly uh, out of box performance. All right, so let me, connect via Bluetooth to the Evolve 50. I am connected and now I'm just going to play a quick song out of here. You, of course, wouldn't walk directly in front of a speaker with a live microphone. The really nice part about the Evolve 50 is you can. It actually has fantastic speaker rejection as far as feedback. So there are eight three and a half inch drivers down the front of this column array and a single 12 at the bottom. So the nice part is. I'm not in coincidence with more than about two of these at any given time until I get far enough away where I'm not really in the feedback range anyway. So I can get a lot of projection, a lot of level out of this system and have people do really dumb things with microphones and not have it really affect me that badly. So the Evolve 50 is uh, shipping everywhere. There is a shorter pole for this as well. It ships in a bag. So the full teardown for this system so you can take it away. And I'm ready to go.